Hello, dear DSC test takers. Welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to explain the grammar questions given in the DSC SGT 2008 question paper. All of you know, solving and practicing the previous year's question papers will help you very much and uh, help you gain more confidence in the subject. So, therefore, I request all of you to watch this video till the end without skipping it in the middle. I also request you to consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with your near and dear ones. Right, thank you so much. And now let's get into the video. 41st question. So, in the 2008 DSE SGT question paper, the grammar questions have begun from 41st question onwards, right? And what is the 41st question? The teacher said to Kamala, how are you? So this is the question. And what is the examiner asking you to do? Let us see that also here. Choose the correct form of the reported speech. Reported speech means, in other words, you can say indirect speech, okay? Indirect speech is also called the reported speech, right? And uh, before we choose the correct form of reported speech from the options given below, let us solve this question on our own first of all, okay? Let us do it first of all. So here, uh, what is there in the direct speech? Direct speech, you know, whatever the matter between the inverted commas, these two are the inverted commas, whatever the matter uh, is put between the inverted commas is called the direct speech. And what is this direct speech? How are you? What is this? How are you? It is a WH question, right? And whenever there is a WH question in the direct speech, what, what should we do? We have to change this uh, reporting verb. Set to, set down, set to is called the reporting verb. That has to be changed into asked, okay? And uh, the teacher asked Kamala and uh, uh, no linking word or connecting word between the reporting uh, reporting verb and this direct speech. We have to use the uh, WH word as it is. So, what should be the right answer? Let me give you here. The teacher asked Kamala, right? The teacher asked Kamala. The connecting word is how? Whatever may be the WH word, that should be used here as it is as a connecting word, right? And here, the question order, are you, is the question order. That should be turned into the right sentence order. What is the right sentence order? You are, that is the right sentence order, right? So, how are you is the question. How you are is the right sentence. So, you, now you change this you, okay? You are, you are to be changed. You means who? Kamala. When you is changed into Kamala, that becomes she, okay? That becomes she, right? And when R is changed into indirect speech, that is turned into was. Because after she, you must use only was. This is R is there. When R is changed into indirect speech, you have to change it into was or were according to the subject of the sentence. Had there been uh, they or some other uh, subject, you should have changed this R into were. But here, the subject is she and she always takes the helping verb was in the past tense. Right. And therefore, the teacher asked Kamala how she was. Must be your answer. Now, let us check the options given uh, here under. The teacher asked Kamala how she was. The very first one is the uh, uh, right answer and uh, all others are wrong. Why they are wrong means you can also check it. The teacher asked, oh, it's okay, how, how she was. Now, that is also used. Connecting word, when the direct speech is in is the WH question, the same WH word must be used as a connecting word between this uh, reporting verb and this direct speech. But here that is used wrongly. So that's why this is wrong. And third one is also wrong. Why? The teacher asked Kamala, how are you? No. So this is again put in the question mark. Right. The teacher asked Kamala, how was she? Again, this is wrong. So whenever you change an ordinary question or a WH question into indirect speech or the reported speech, you know, you must change the question order into the right sentence order. Right. So that is the point you understand that. So uh, now let's move on to the uh, next question. My little sister is there, a beautiful dress on her birthday party. So my little sister, 
dash here is a dash what to be used in this blank so let us see that my little sister dash a beautiful dress on her birthday party this is the question and uh, uh, what are the options given here and what is the uh, examiner asking you to do choose the correct phrasal verb the examiner is asking you to choose the correct phrasal verb that means here he, the examiner has given you some phrasal verbs out of which you have to choose the correct one or the most relevant one what is that put off okay put up put on and put in so out of these four phrasal verbs you have to choose the right answer here according to the context of the sentence given sentence you know the my little sister put off a beautiful dress or put up a beautiful dress put on a beautiful dress put in a beautiful dress which is the uh, right one here but uh, before you uh, you can use the correct answer here let us see the meanings of these uh, uh, phrasal verbs see here put off means what put off means postpone okay postpone the examinations have been the dsc examination has been postponed or put off put off means postponed right okay postpone and here uh, uh, put up put on is there put on means to wear wear means uh, to wear means to put on on the festive occasions the children put on new clothes at Diwali, at Christmas, at Ramzan, what happens at these festive occasions? People put on new clothes, new robes, right? Put on means to wear. To wear means in Telugu, Dharin Chuta. Postpone means postpone Chaita. And put up is there, second one. Put up means what? It has got uh, uh, several meanings. Put up means uh, to fix, okay? To fix means or to fasten, okay? To fasten. So that is one meaning. To fix, okay? How? A notice has been put up on the notice board. A notice has been put up on the notice board. Put up. Put up means to fix or to fasten. That is the one meaning. And the second meaning is to spend. Okay. To spend. To spend or to pay is another meaning. Yes. The, the family has put up a lot of amount for his treatment. Okay. Put up means spend or pay. And put up has another meaning. Accommodate. Will you put up me for this night in your house? Will you put up me in your house for this night? Put up means in other words, accommodate. Okay, accommodate. And in this way, and put up has also, has also got another meaning. Put up means increase or raise. Okay, increase or raise. Okay, see the RBI has put up uh, uh, home loan interest rates home loan interest rates the bank has put up a home loan interest rates so put up means increase or raise and put in means what put in means to make a request to make a request the old man has put in for a pension the school has put in uh, for uh, a grant to repair their college school building something like that put in means to make a request for something so what is the most suitable one in this blank means uh, my si little sister is yes, put on this uh, third one is the right one my little sister put on a beautiful dress so in this way so this third one is the right one and all others are wrong ones okay and uh, now let's move on to the uh, next uh, question Party third one is there choose the correct form of leave taking for the letter which you start addressing as dear madam See, whenever you address somebody as a dear sir or dear madam, okay, generally uh, people will be addressing their uh, superiors in this way. That is called a salutation. Dear sir is a salutation. Dear madam is a salutation. So, when you begin the letter with a dear sir or dear madam, you are leave taking. Leave taking means, okay, the closing of the letter must be what you are uh, what is that? Faithfully. Okay. It should be always yours faithfully. You know about uh, the letter writing. So let us see the uh, uh, options given here. You were lovingly wrong, you were affectionately wrong, you were faithfully right, you were obediently wrong. So this is the right one. And third one is going to be your answer. Right. And now let's move on to the next question. Choose the polite form of invitation. You are inviting somebody for something, you know, for the invitation. So what is the polite form of invitation? Okay. How do you request somebody for something? So there are several ways of uh, requesting somebody for something. So here, what is the most polite form? Oh, why don't you come to my party? 
you are requesting somebody to come to your party how do you make that how do you request uh, a person uh, in a more in a polite manner means why don't you come to my party no you cannot say like that it is a, a, a little bit impolite it is a little bit rough why don't you come to my party na party ke enduku raavu so it is not the polite way of uh, uh, invitation right and how about coming to my party it is also not correct ma party ko stava something like that how about coming to my party come to my party ma party ka these are all direct you know they are impolite they sound impolite they don't uh, look courteous you know the the way the style of saying is not courteous and polite and that's why what should you say could you please you are using the word please it's very polite it's a polite word in our everyday life if you speak every sentence using the word polite please you know that looks so nice and all that the other man will be very much pleased isn't it so could you please come to my party daite sma party ki mir raagala ra how nice it is so that's why this is the most polite form of invitation so fourth one is going to be your answer and now let's move on to the uh, next question 45th one is there choose the appropriate form of polite response okay appropriate form of polite response to a telephone call suppose somebody has called you how do you respond to that uh, person okay you must be polite to others okay um, everybody today has a mobile phone or telephone so everybody is using a mobile phone but you should know how to respond to the other person that's a very very important thing and here you pay attention uh, when somebody calls you uh, what will be your polite response to that do you say who is it no you cannot say who is it everybody everya something like that so may i know who is calling so this is a this is a very polite uh, response may i know who is calling evaru phone chestunnaro telusukovachuna it's a very polite one who are you no you cannot directly say that wrong who is calling no you cannot say that so who is it who are you who is calling these are the things uh, that uh, don't uh, uh, exhibit your uh, polite uh, like a nature towards the person who is calling you but only this second one will let that man know that you are very polite to him and because you are saying may i know who is calling ever call chestunnaro nenu telusukovachina something like that so this is a very polite one okay and this is going to be your answer and now let's move on to the next question of all the metals dash gold is the most precious okay is here blank is given before this gold and what should be used in this blank okay let us see uh, what the examiner is asking you to do okay correct choose the correct article to complete the sentence if necessary he is asking you to complete this blank with uh, a suitable article okay that means he ha he he must have given you uh, articles as the options okay a and the no article see remember after the blank what is there gold is there gold means what it is a metal okay and here remember there is one important rule if you can learn the rules of use of a use of and use of the on these three things i have made a beautiful videos if possible please watch those videos and get acquainted with all these rules and you can easily uh, and successfully uh, solve the questions given in the examination see there is a rule uh, in the english language before the name of metals we should not use any article for example gold is there and silver is there iron is there these are all metals we should not use any article you cannot say the gold the silver the the, the iron you cannot say that but uh, if at all there is a thing made of that you can use a golden chain okay a golden chain you can do that so this is a, a, a golden chain and when you say when you can say a golden chain you can also say the golden chain i want the golden chain whenever you want to uh, talk about that particular chain okay so here only just before the names of the metals you should not use any article so that is a big rule and please watch uh, the video i have made on the use of uh, the definite article okay omission of articles okay on all these things i have made wonderful videos if you can subscribe to my channel you can watch all those videos there will be no problem at all right and here uh, this is the name of a metal so before the name of a metal no article is used okay and that's why this fourth one is the only your answer okay a, for a is wrong second one is wrong third one only the fourth one is right okay no article should be used before the names of metals right okay 47th one is that the student leader gave a passionate speech 
and won the election in the college. Passionate speech. So here this word is underlined and uh, uh, put in red color. Right. And uh, what is the question? The underlined word means, what is the meaning of that word? Let us see the options given. Emotional, ambitious, encouraging, descriptive. So these are the four meanings you know, given for this word. Emotional is the right word. Emotional means enthusiastic, ardent. Passionate means emotional. Passionate means enthusiastic. That's very important. Enthusiastic. Utsaha barita maina. Enthusiastic. Ardent also you can say that. And any one of them you can say emotional is only the right one. And ambitious is not the right one. Ambitious means having a strong desire for personal advancement is called ambitious. You can also say aspiring. All of you know that. And encouraging means okay, supporting or something like that. Descriptive means what is that? Uh, uh, describing. So the second one, the third one, the fourth one are wrong. Only the first one is only your answer. The passionate passionate means emotional, right? And now move on to the next question. Forty eighth one is there. I saw a dash cat in the kitchen. Okay, right. What is the examiner asking you to do? I here is a blank given, and uh, the, choose the correct phrase to complete the sentence. He is asking you to fill the gap or fill in the blank with a correct phrase. What is that? Let us see the options given here. Fat, black, big, big, black, fat, big, fat, black, black, fat, big. So these are all the adjectives describing this cat okay and uh, what must be the right one in this blank okay before you you can fill in this blank with uh, any one of these options first of all let me tell you something about these uh, adjectives what is that you know yes let me tell already uh, i have dealt with uh, this uh, idea in in the uh, in some other video made on tet question paper okay some tet question paper uh, you can say in the tet grammar i, I made this point clear what is that there are two kinds of adjectives okay let me give you very briefly two kinds of uh, adjectives right you know very well two kinds of adjectives what is that uh, cumulative okay cumulative adjectives and uh, coordinate cumulative adjectives coordinate adjectives cumulative adjectives coordinate adjectives what are the cumulative adjectives cumulative adjectives means what Cumulative adjectives means, you can say, if the adjectives describing a noun, what do the adjectives do? They describe or they qualify a noun, okay? If all the adjectives, okay, describing this noun are not equally important. See, if the adjectives describing a noun are not equally important, then they are called cumulative adjectives. Okay, and when you want to mention these adjectives, uh, you need to maintain some specific order. What is that order? Osas camp. I have made this Osas, Osas camp. Osas camp is there. This is the order you have to maintain while mentioning these adjectives. Osas means you must see the, you, know, you must express the opinion of about that uh, noun. First, uh, the opinion indicating word must be used. Then the shape, size indicating word must be used. Then the age indicating word. Then the shape indicating, color indicating, what is that? Uh, origin indicating, material indicating, purpose indicating. So when you mention these adjectives, uh, you must follow this order. You must arrange these adjectives in this order. Okay. Opinion indicating adjective must be put first, then size indicating word adjective must be put next, then the age indicating adjective, then the shape indicating adjective, then the uh, color indicating adjective, origin indicating adjective, metal, me, me, material indicating adjective, purpose indicating adjective. Osas comp. Here, let me give you one example. Yes, she has. black round beautiful eyes this is a wrong sentence she has black round beautiful eyes and now what is the right one here she has first uh, opinion indicating what do you think of these eyes these eyes are what is that beautiful it's your opinion she has beautiful 
then what is that shape indicating size or shape size or shape shape indicating means round don't use any comma round then color indicating adjective black she has beautiful round black eyes that must be your order but not uh, she has black round beautiful as you please no you cannot say because they are cumulative adjectives and uh, all these adjectives you know all the all the adjectives when all the adjectives describing a noun are not uh, equally important uh, then they are called cumulative adjectives and they must uh, they must be written in a specific order what is that order you know osas camp is the uh, specific order according to that only you have to write and here this uh, uh, coordinate uh, adjectives are there coordinate adjectives means all the adjectives uh, describing that noun are equally important if they are equally important uh, you need not follow any specific order and you have to only follow the commas and before the last but one if there are two or more than uh, uh, two adjectives you know before la before the last but one you have to use and so that is the only thing you have to follow for example here i am just give you the example for this uh, coordinate uh, adjectives uh, what is that uh, pug is a small sturdy and compact dog here all adjectives are of equal importance small is a opinion indicating adjective sturdy is also an opinion indicating adjective and compact is also an opinion indicating adjective so they are all of equal rank equal equal uh, they are equal importance and that's why you use only a comma after the first one and before the last but one we have to use and so pug is a small sturdy and compact dog you can also say pug is a sturdy small and compact pug is a compact small sturdy anything in any order you can use but uh, you have to separate these adjectives by commas and uh, before the last but one you have to use the conjunction and that is what you have to. so they are coordinate adjectives and these are uh, cumulative adjectives right now let us talk about uh, our answers okay now look at these options given here I'll, I'll give them i mention them here right so in this you know opinion indicating uh, uh, adjective is not there first of all what should you say opinion indicating adjective is not there right and the size indicating uh, what size means what big okay then age age is not there shape shape means what uh, shape what is it shape fat and then what color indicating one is there color color means black okay this must be your order big fat black big fat black so first you have to indicate because opinion indicating adjective is not there okay size indicating adjective you have to write then age indicating no shape indicate shape is hot what is the shape of that fat and then uh, color indicating and uh, origin ma material purpose they are those adjectives are not given here so if at all they are there you have to arrange them in that order and here only this is first big then fat then black so you have to arrange these adjectives only in this order big fat black so this third one is your answer and the first one second one fourth one are wrong only the third one is the right one and now let's move on to the next question and the 49th one the play really made us the play means the drama okay the drama really made us dash here dash is given and let us see what to use in that blank and what is the examiner asking you to do okay here choose the correct word or phrase to complete the sentence so here we have to use the correct phrase or word uh, that is given here and then uh, what are the options given here laughed laughing being laughed laugh so of these four options uh, after this uh, make uh, we should not use any other verb except the base form verb okay here made is there make made made these are the verb. after this we have to use only the base form verb so laughed is the past tense form verb not allowed laughing is the pa present participle verb not allowed being laughed passive is uh, past participle verb is given here okay right these three are not allowed only this one is allowed that is laugh okay based on verb so this fourth one is the right one here the play really made us laugh okay after certain verbs like uh, bid okay make to let hear okay see after these verbs we should use only the base form verb or plain infinitive okay plain infinitive not the two infinitive so made us laugh okay after this make means uh, 
So that's why laugh is there. That is the rule here, right? And then Lata and Prasanna were able to cross the road. So in this is the question given. And uh, now what is the examiner asking you to do? The sentence explains. What is the sentence uh, uh, telling you? What is the sentence telling you means here? Is it telling you about a past action? No. Is it telling you about the past ability? Yes. A possibility? No. An obligation? No. It is only telling you the past ability. You say were able to cross the road. Lata and Prasanna were able. That means they could. Could means past ability. Am is are plus able. So, am is are less able this is present this indicates am able am able is able or able indicates a present ability and here was and were less able this indicates past ability so it's like that so here it is indicating the past ability right and now let's move on to the uh, next question 51st question is that hari and ravi dash here for 10 years okay for 10 years this is the question what to fill in this blank okay and choose the correct verb form to complete that so he is asking you to choose the correct verb form so that must be uh, the correct verb form and let us choose it from the options given here what are they lived okay are living have been living living so live so these are the four uh, options given but here uh, what to use in this blank means you have to uh, observe the sentence hari and ravi dash here for 10 years here you see that for plus period of time is there okay for plus period of time whenever there is for plus period of time in the given sentence there must be used in that sentence present perfect continuous tense right and therefore the the answer is uh, lived is not correct it is not it is past tense are living present continuous uh, okay it is wrong okay and have been living present perfect continuous tense okay and live is is you know simple present tense not okay so here lived are living live are wrong only have been living the third one is only your right option right answer right yes hari and ravi have been living here for 10 years right and here you go to the second one 52nd one uh, they are known dash be honest okay be honest and again one more blank is given here what to use in this blank okay let us uh, uh, see what the uh, examiner is uh, asking you to do so uh, choose the correct preposition the examiner is asking you to choose the correct preposition okay what are the prepositions given here then by is given to for with so here by they are known by be by by is not used there by be honest no or be honest no with be honest no only to be honest they are known to be honest so after this is known so moreover this b is there before b only you have to use that preposition to so to be honest they are known to be honest so two must be used there and now let's move on to the next question 53rd one is that my room is cozy cozy this is the sentence this is a question and what is the examiner asking you to do the underlined word means is asking you to tell you the meaning what is the meaning of this let us see the options comfortable the very first one is the right one cozy means comfortable comfortable means uh, free from stress and tension that situation is called uh, uh, comfortable if you are free from stress if you are free from tension it means you are comfortable it means you are cozy and cheap means everybody knows this is not that meaning expensive is costly this is not that meaning horrible means terrible this is not that so second one fourth one third one these are not correct only the first one is the right one right and now let's move on to the next one if raju had been honest okay another big blank is given here what is the examiner asking you to do choose the correct answer to complete the sentence we have to choose the uh, uh, right answer okay to complete the sentence right uh, what are the options given he would had written no this is not the right one he would return the money no so he would have returned the money this is the right one he would has he would has you know after has is given wrong after would had is given so these two are absolutely wrong after would you cannot use had you cannot use has so that's why these two are absolutely wrong they are dropped and would return this is this is to some extent correct this is to some extent correct the grammatically they are correct but which is the most appropriate one here means the third one is only the most appropriate one he would have written them why means here you know something about the conditional sentences we have three kinds of conditional sentences 
open conditional sentences, impossible conditional sentences, unfulfilled conditional sentences. We have in this way four, three con kinds of conditional sentences and each conditional sentence has got uh, its own mere pattern. For example, let me give you first one, open condition, first one, okay, second one, third one. Open, okay, open conditional sentences, impossible conditional sentences, unfulfilled conditional sentences, this is there. So, in all these conditional sentences, there will be two parts, if class part, if class part and main class part, these two class, these, these two parts will be there. So, here in the open conditional sentence, simple present will be there, okay, in the if class part. In the, in the main class, shall or will, can, may plus base form where that is there. And in the impossible conditional sentence, simple, this is simple present please and uh, simple past. This past tense will be there, and here should do, would do, could do, might do, plus base form where this is there, and in the unfulfilled condition sentence, uh, past perfect will be there. Past perfect will be there, and uh, in this, in this, in the main class part uh, should have, okay, okay, would have, could have, might have. Plus PP, past participle form. So, in this way, these are the three types of conditional sentences. About the conditional sentences, I made a separate video. Please watch that video. And uh, everywhere, I cannot give all these details, you know, because I have made uh, videos on several grammatical, important grammatical topics. Please watch those videos and try to benefit from them, okay. And uh, again and again, I cannot tell you all these things. So, here in the if clause part, there is a past perfect tense, okay. Past perfect tense means automatically there must be a main clause with would have, should have, might have, plus pp. So, here would have is there, okay, plus pp is there. So, therefore, this third one is only the right one here. Right. Now, let us move on to the uh, next question. 55th one is there. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank? So, broadly seen, okay, there are four kinds of sentences. Assertive sentences, okay, interrogative sentences imperative sentences exclamatory sentence that's the broad division but uh, another kind of division is like this assertive sentence affirmative sentence interrogative sentence negative sentence interrogative come negative sentence so in this way five kinds of sentence so here now the sentence is a, an exclamatory sentence so let us change it into an affirmative sentence affirmative sentence means an assertive sentence a normal sentence okay normal sentence. so let us change it to the sentence okay the moonlight how sweet the moonlight sleeps means the mo that means uh, the moonlight uh, very sweetly sleeps upon this bank. This first one is only the right. But the meaning of this is the normal sentence of this is the moonlight very sweetly sleeps upon this bank that is there. So the moonlight very sleepily will sleep. No, not will sleep because this is in the simple present. So you have to use only simple present. The moonlight very sweetly has slept. No present perfect is there. So, the moonlight very sweetly is sleeping, present continuous tense is given. So, therefore, these three are wrong, only the first one is the right one because the sentence here in the exclamatory sentence is given in the simple present tense only. Okay, right. And now, let us go to the uh, next question. 56th question is the mother dash, she cried, come and pick this baby pumpkin from me. So, the doctor is saying, mother, when you call somebody, mother, mother, come and pick this baby pumpkin from me. So, she cried because it is heavy for her other bed. So, what is the examiner asking you to do? Choose the correct punctuation mark in this plan. What is the correct punctuation mark to be used in this? Comma, no, hyphen, no, colon, no, comma means this one, hyphen means small dash, Hyf uh, colon means these two dots are called a colon, right? Exclamation mark means this is there. So, only the exclamation mark, mother, when you say that, you know, an exclamatory mark must be used there. Mother. Come and pick this baby pumpkin from me. When you say this, you know, you must use an exclamatory mark. So, here that is only the right mark, right punctuation mark to be used there. Okay. Now, let us move on to the um, other questions. So, 57th one is there. Sheila did not carry him for his uh, farcical allegation. Allegation means charge, allegation, which made him angry. And that, you know, that thing made him angry. So, she did not carry him for his farcical allegation. And what is this, uh, in the statement, this farcical is underlined and put in red color. And uh, what is the uh, examiner asking you to do? The underlined word means, the, the examiner is asking you to show its meaning, okay. And what are the options given here? Grave is there, grave, ridiculous, serious, abnormal and all that. So, here, grave means serious, serious means grave. 
grave also means uh, very important uh, and considerable oh it's, he has made a, a grave mistake an important mistake okay as a, a, a serious mistake grave means serious serious means grave and here ridiculous means what uh, ludicrous ludicrous means you know uh, that makes one laugh it okay okay ridiculous and silly in other words also you can say ridiculous means silly abnormal means unusual okay unusual okay unusual so in this way here Sheila did not um, carry him for his farcical farcical means what not grave allegation or serious allegation but ridiculous allegation ridiculous means just meaningless just silly and ludicrous that is the meaning of this and uh, this word doesn't give the meanings of uh, these words grave serious abnormal it gives only the meaning of uh, ridiculous now let's move on to the other questions are there any books on the shelf okay and here this any is uh, underlined and uh, put in red color and uh, the underlined word is what now the examiner is asking you to tell what this word is uh, okay what this word is what is that options an adverb no it's not an adverb okay a preposition no a conjunction no it's only a determiner determiner means what determiner means uh, a word which is used to describe or qualify a noun that is called a determiner okay here any book this any is describing this uh, noun any word that is used to describe a noun is called a determiner so second one is your answer and now move on to the next question 59th one is there go to store the correct question tag is so this is the question and the examiner is asking you to do this one what is he asking you to do he is asking you to show the correct question tag so what is this sentence this is an imperative sentence remember i made a video on the use of question tags please watch this uh, exhaustive very comprehensive okay a video all details are given there in that you know okay. please watch such wonderful knowledgeable videos and you please in, enhance your knowledge of english okay and you will be successful in all your competitive examinations and here this is an imperative sentence whenever this imperative sentence the, the question tag to this will be either will you or won't you will you or won't you must be your question tag so this is a, a, an ordinary uh, imperative sentence if at all it is said in a serious manner serious tone then you then the question tag will be can't you or won't you but here if it is you know as an ordinary command or request uh, then your question tag will be will you or won't you okay right any one of them you can use what are the options given here? do you know did you know aren't you know won't you is the right Will you is not given automatically won't you right and now go to the uh, 60th one venu dash okay blank is given big blank and here ravi until the end of next week so this is the answer this ravi has given to the question posed by this venu what must be the question posed by this venu let us see that here okay choose the correct question form to complete the conversation uh, what would be the correct question of the of this venu to this ravi okay because the answer uh, to that question is until the end of next week so what will be the uh, question how long have you been here for no you cannot say that okay how long are you here for no how long have you been here no because how long are you here and the column to now that means how long are you going to stay here that is the way going to stay here because uh, that is the meaning how long are you here means how long are you going to stay here that is the meaning and that's why until the end of next week ocche varamu chivari varaku ikkada untanu antunnaru ocche varamu chivari varaku ante enta kaalam ikkada undabothunnav ane question veste ne kada therefore how long are you here means what is that how long are you going to stay here that is the meaning of that in, in these questions in the first one third one fourth one you don't get this meaning and therefore and how long are you here is the right question here right and now let's move on to the uh, next question 61 is that the silent letter in the word should is what should okay what is the silent letter h or l or s or d what is the silent letter you just see that how do you, how are you pronounce should is there yes h o u e l should sh is okay u okay d okay should you are you are not pronouncing this o you are not pronouncing this l okay 
you are just is pronouncing should do should do yes it you these three things only you are pronouncing of this word and you are not pronouncing this o and also this l you are not saying should should something like that you are not saying so these two things are uh, not pronounced they are silent okay but uh, and the question is the silent letter in the word should is and this O is not given. If at all this O is given, we would have marked that one also. But here, this uh, H is not silent. Uh, this S is not silent. This uh, D is not silent. Only this L is silent. Okay. So here, uh, these three things are wrong, and only this one. So the second one is your answer. L is the silent one. Of course, these two things are silent. But in the answer uh, options, you no, know, only L is given, not O is given. That's why whatever is given, you have to mark it. Okay. Yeah, right. And now you go to the second one, 62nd one. Why did your brother write such a letter? So this is the question. And what is the examiner asking you to do? The passive form of the given sentence is, what is the passive form of this? So before we choose the correct answer from the given options, uh, let us uh, change this sentence into passive voice. On the wise also, I have made a video. Please watch that video when time permits me. Why did your brother write such a letter? So here, why question? Why did you? This is in the simple past. Okay, you understand that. And now, what is the? Why did your brother write? Write. This is the verb. Okay, you find out the object of the sentence. To find out the object of the sentence, you must question the verb with what. You must question the verb with what. What. Okay. Why did your brother write what? Write what? A such a letter. This is the object. Okay. Such a letter is an object, right is a verb, your brother is the subject and this sentence is in the simple past tense. All these details are just before you and it is a WH question. So, when you change this WH question into passive voice, you have to write the uh, WH word as it is. And now, what is the uh, object of the sentence? Such a letter. What is this object? It is singular in number. What is the tense of the sentence? Sim simple past tense. When you change the simple past tense into passive voice, you have to use was or were. If the object is singular, was must be used. If the object is plural, verb must be used. So here, uh, this object has to be brought to the front position. But uh, before you bring this object to the front position, you must use, because it's a question, you must write the helping verb and then you must write the object. Such a letter. Why was such a letter? And uh, afterwards, uh, the past participle form of this verb that is written by the proportion. The subject is your brother. Your brother should be as it is. Okay, this is that. So, why was such a letter written by your brother? This must be your answer. And uh, let us check the options. Okay, okay. Here you pay attention. Right. See, why was such a letter written by your? The very first one is the right one, and all others are wrong. Why? Why did again in the passive wise no did is not used. Why did such a letter was written by your no, it's wrong. Such a letter was written by your brother. Why? No. Why had your no had is not used? Because this is a, the simple past. Okay. So second one, third one, fourth one are absolutely wrong. And only the first one is your uh, answer. Right. Appropriate answer. Right. And now let's move on to the next question. Would you follow me wherever I would go? So this is the question. This is uh, this sentence is divided into four parts: A, B, C, D, right? And uh, what is the uh, examiner asking you to do? Choose the part of the sentence that has an error. So which part has an error? Would you no mistake at all? It's right. Follow me. No mistake at all. It's right. Wherever, okay. And this D is wrong. You should not say where I would go. You should simply you should say where I go is that. Instead of saying I would go, you had better say I go. That's why in this part there is a grammatical error, right? And let us choose it. Uh, one A, okay, wrong, wrong, this is the right one. Where is the D? Third one. This third is your answer, right? And now go to the 64th one. Some boys are at least as industrious as Suresh. So this is in the, the positive degree, okay? This is about the degrees of comparison. I also made a beautiful video on degrees of comparison. Please watch that video. Okay, right. Some boys are at least as industrious as Suresh. And now let us change it. What is the examiner asking you to do? The sentence can be said as, this sentence can be, this is the positive degree. This can be changed into comparative degree. What must be the comparative degree? Let us change it into comparative degree. Okay, and here you see Suresh is not more in this 
Trius than some boys. Than some boys. Suresh is not more industrious than some boys. Some boys are at least as industrious as Suresh means. Suresh is not more industrious than some boys. So let us see the options given here. Suresh is more industrious than some other boys. No. Okay. Suresh is the most industrious boy. No. Some boys are the most. No. Suresh is not more industrious than some other boys. Some boys, some other boys. Okay. Some boys are good, some other boys are. Good. So this fourth one is only your answer. Now let's move on to the next questions. 65th to 68th questions, four questions are given. They, are, they depend on the given passage. The following passage has four blanks. Choose the suitable word for each blank to make the passage meaningful. Okay, some passage is given in that passage. Four blanks are given. You have to read the passage and uh, fill in those four blanks. Okay, meaningfully. Right. And uh, uh, let me read the passage for you and uh, let us uh, fill in the blanks afterwards. One, two, three, four. An effective speech dash an attractive speech. Okay. It not only dash the audience. Okay. That speech not only dash uh, the audience, but it dash changes them. Okay. Worried audience becomes cheerful. Mild audience becomes wild. Sometimes listeners change dash faith as a result of an effective speech. So this is a small passage with four blanks in it. And now let us fill in those blanks with suitable words uh, given uh, from the options uh, for, uh, for each blank. Okay, 65th blank is there. Has, is, had, was. These are the four blank, uh, words given, four options given. Out of these four options, we have to fill in the blank. An effective speech, it's a singular subject. And after this singular subject, we have to use only a singular verb. So, as an effective speech has, no, you cannot say has, had, you cannot say was, you cannot say is, you say. So, as an effective speech is an attractive speech, right? It will not only dash, not only, after not only, you have to use a verb, okay? Okay, it will not only dash. What is the uh, option given here? Okay. It will not only attract. It is there. It means uh, third person singular. After this, the verb must have yes after that. Okay. Oh, it will not only verb dash yes. Attract is not correct. Attracted is not correct. Attracts. Attract plus yes is attracts. So this attracts must be used. See, some clues are also given because this is a simple present tense. Okay, and it is a, uh, it is in the third person singular. So, after this it, you must use a main verb with uh, s after it or yes or yes. So, here uh, attracts is there, yes is there. So, it not only attract the audience but uh, uh, 67th, what is that and uh, uh, every time some uh, and uh, uh, but dash changes them anytime, no, okay, every time, no, time to time, sometimes, okay, here this fourth one. But uh, here verb is there and therefore we have to use what is that. But uh, uh, sometimes it changes them. Sometimes changes them. Time to time changes them. No. Every time changes them. Anytime. So these three words are not used in this. Uh, and only the fourth one is used in that. Right. Worried audience becomes cheerful. Mild audience becomes wild. Sometimes listeners change. Uh, dash fix. After change. This is a verb. After change. Uh, this uh, uh, What is that? Uh, uh, noun is there. After noun. So, before this noun, there must be an adjective, okay. Uh, so, because there is a clue given here, okay? faith means noun, uh, before that you must use an adjective. So, what must be the adjective used here, okay, our, okay, here our, their, her, his, okay? these are all possessive adjectives, not normal adjectives, okay. And here, what must be used here, listeners, listeners means what, many listeners are there. So, therefore, it stands for they, okay, and for they, what should be the possessive adjective, they, so here they must be used, where is the they, this is the, this is the, this is the right one, and all others are wrong, 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 therefore, in this way, an effective speech is an attractive speech, it not only attracts the audience, but uh, sometimes changes them. A read audience becomes cheerful, mild audience becomes wild. Sometimes listeners change their faith, their faith as a result of an effective speech. So this is about the about this passage, about these four questions. And now let's move on to the next questions. So 69 to 72. Okay. Again, five questions are given here, and uh, you have to answer them 
after reading the following passage here is the passage given after reading this passage uh, you have to answer those five questions so here you see that this this uh, passage is all about uh, snakes here snakes are wonderful creatures you understand that they have no legs at all okay they don't have legs even then then how do they move about how do they you can say run how do they you can say uh, go means they crawl on their bellies they just uh, they don't have legs but they crawl on their legs crawling means you know very well moving like that they have no ears either they don't have eye, eye ears also they don't have legs they don't have ears ears okay and uh, do, uh, don't they listen to sound then don't they listen to sound no they don't listen to sound at all you have seen a cobra raise the front of its body spreads its hood his soundly swaying its body to the rhythm of the music of the charmer's fight you must have seen snake charmer and when he is uh, uh, blowing that uh, uh, pipe what happens no it will be swaying its body okay it will raise the front of its body and it will spread its uh, hood and it will be hissing and loudly swaying okay like that and haven't you you have seen such things haven't you he is asking you how then can it uh, dance to the charmer's tune do you think it is uh, enjoying the music played by this uh, snake charmer no it is simple what is that the cobra does not listen to the music in fact the cobra does not have ears it cannot hear any sounds but what is that but it, it merely looks at the charmer's pipe and sways its body to the swinging of the pipe so here this uh, uh, the snakes do not have ears and simply they they will be swaying according to the swinging of the snake charmer's pipe so what will he be doing he will be saying like this when they when he is blowing the pipe saying like this swinging is a, a pipe you no know, the snake will also be swinging or swaying okay the snake will also be swaying swaying means moving here and there only that is the thing but that it doesn't uh, he listen to the music played by this uh, snake charmer so that is all about this uh, passage and now let's move on to answer the questions given here under this passage okay please keep this passage in your mind and uh, now let's solve the questions 69th question is there the passage is about you know the previous passage i have read for you is all ab about what the snake the nature of snakes no the charmer pipe no the music of the charmer no snakes and their dance this is about that passage snakes and their their dance okay that is there and here very simple find the correct statement what is the correct statement char the charmer has to blow the pipe to make the snake dance is it the correct statement okay uh, only do you think uh, when the charmer blows the pipe uh, it will start to sing uh, uh, dancing no the charmer has to use a long pipe to make the snake dance no does he have to use a long pipe to make it to sing or dance no the charmer has to move the pipe not using a long pipe or what is that uh, blowing the pipe but uh, swinging the pipe okay when the when the charmer moves the pipe to make then only the snake dances according to the movement of that pipe it will what is that dance otherwise it won't dance so this is all the correct statement the snake has to hiss to make the charmer no so first one second one fourth one are wrong only the third one is the right one and now move on to the uh, other questions 71st question if the charmer stands still and blows the pipe suppose if the charmer stands still without uh, uh, moving the pipe what is that and blows the pipe what happens the snake will not dance yes the very first one is the right one if the charmer stands still and uh, uh, what is that uh, blows the pipe the snake will not dance only if the pipe moves here and there according to its movement only the snake will move and you think it is dancing according to the music that is only our mistake right and the snake will listen to him no the snake will enjoy the tune now the snake will sway its body to the rhythm of the music now only the first one is the right one and you go to the next one the snakes are wonderful creatures because they are wonderful creatures in the world okay because why they have no legs but still walk slowly on the ground now they have no ears but still dance by the movement of the charmers what is that yes a uh, pipe okay that is only the right one they have no ears it's wonderful because though the snakes do not have ears they still dance by the movement of the charmer's pipe the movement of the charmer's pipe if the charmer says this side it will go this side it will 
it will be moving like that okay so that's why they are one the snakes are wonderful creatures they enjoy by listening to the music no it face its body so as to bite the charmer no so only the second one is the right one in this way this video comes to an end please watch this video and a few more uh, videos also i am going to upload very shortly okay dear dsc test takers thank you so much for watching this video and uh, if at all you like this video please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing this video with your near and dear ones and i am also going to upload a few more videos for your benefit for your convenience please watch all of them and if you have any problems with regard to any kind of grammatical uh, aspects please mention them in the comment section and with another beautiful video i'll be back to you until then bye see all of you okay